Check it out, folks. After seeing that thumbnail, I already know why you're here. Today, we're making grilled pork chops, but I got one for you. The secret's in the marinade. Let's get it. Okay, so look, when you're looking at these pork chops right here, I'm gonna go ahead and touch these so you guys can see. Look, when you grill them, I like to have a nice thick one, right? Look at that right there. Look at the cap. You know what I mean? Look at the size of that. Whew, this right here gonna be, when I tell you good, I mean good. So you know the term I like to use is like fire, right? So look, you can see it's only one, two, three, four, five ingredients. This right here is gonna turn it right over the top for you folks. Okay, so look, now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and just start mixing our ingredients, right? So listen, I'm gonna pour, you know, my oils in, get all of this in here. Notice that I'm using a spatula, you wanna get it all, right? So this is more like a dump and go. I'm gonna go ahead and address this part when it comes to the, check this out, when it comes to, you know, your clothes, right? When I take my clothes, I just smash these. I'm gonna put them in last, but I'll show you why. Then, listen, you just wanna go ahead and just mix this up, right? But you see it kinda like it be a little bit on the thick side. That's what you want. That's what you get from having that, that oil in there, right? And then if you guys are lucky and fortunate enough to have some of that infused olive oil, like I like to use that branch and vine, you know what I mean? I like to use that garlic for just about everything. Then when I look for them unique uh, flavors, they got them too, right? Now, when I was talking about this right here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smash these. Now, if you mince them, don't forget, I said grill. They'll just make them little black little spots, right? Now, if you guys pay attention to this right here, look, this is my zip quicker. Man, I got it. This is like another hand in the kitchen. Look, I don't have to hold nothing. And when I wanna put something inside of it, it's already open and we just start adding our chops. I know some of y'all just like, ooh, I would love to have one of them chops. Then once you got everything incorporated just right, now check this part out right there. Remember that spatula? Look, it's key to having the right tools because I don't want none, all this on the side. I want to get it all, right? That's for all my new cooks. You know what I mean? Especially the new people too. The, like the younger generation need to know why. So now you just go ahead and pour it. Look at that right there. And this is your marinade, folks. And remember, the clothes, just go ahead and give them a smash. We just want to open them up. Let its aromatic, you know, just drop in there. I kind of like smash these kind of hard, you know, but we just drop them in like that. Unroll this, you know. Get a little bit of the air out, and then we just massage. And then you can see right here where I put the garlic, how I smashed it. You just want to get that in there. Then as you moving it around, that garlic will start to infuse even more and put that flavor in here on top of the meat, right? And then we let it soak. Now, here's the thing. Listen, four hours is okay, but overnight, you know, would be best. And seeing how thick these are, these got to go on the grill. We got to get the marks on there. We want it to make it look right. And we want it, most of all, we want it to taste right. So I'm going to put these in the refrigerator and check it out. This time, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. And then we finna put them on the kettle grill. Okay, folks, look, it's day number two, right? So listen, these been marinating overnight. These is nice and ready. If you guys come on and take a look, look at them. You can see the color. But listen, when the longer you let them marinate, the longer that marinade gets inside of that flesh, right? Look at that right there. Oh, yeah. So first thing I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my, you know, my chimney started because we're going to, like I said, this is going to be grilled, right? Okay, so look, now my chimney, we got that going, you know, right? We're building up those, you know, getting the heat under them, underneath the coals, right? So I want you guys to take a look. This right here help everybody because if you got short tongs or just working over a grill, you know, it kind of like, I'm going to just do it like this. Sometimes you got to reach in there, you know, you feel the heat, right? So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a pro tip. A lot of people don't know this. You know what I mean? Listen, this is a cut resistant glove. If you guys got them cotton gloves, those work too. But look, it's just an extra shield to keep you from burning yourself, right? Like I said, these are cut resistant. You guys can pick these up on Amazon for a dime a dozen. You can get like three sets or something like that for about $12, $15. Then you go ahead and put a latex over the top. This is how I'm able to pick up anything that's hot, even on the grill. I can pick it up and transfer it wherever I want to. You guys just saw right now, this, the coals is nice and red, right? I'm gonna use my, don't have to use these now because it's not hot, obviously, right? So listen, I got it divided. On this side will be my direct, you know, my direct heat, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop these in now. Right? All right, so what I did was, if you guys look, I just added a couple, you know, just, just like a few, you know, new briquettes, right? 
I just put them in like that just so that these can like ignite. I put some of these hot ones on here. Listen, it'll transfer and those will ignite, right? I'm gonna put this lid on the top. Then I'm gonna go ahead and clean that grill. We just wanna get some heat. I got it vented on the bottom. So we are getting a lot of air from the bottom and we want it to pull, right? So because I wanna get some heat in here, look, I'm gonna open this up like that. And I'm gonna do something a little differently. It's a whole bunch of debate about where you put this vent at, but then the temp gauge is over here. If this is my heat zone, right? That means this is gonna be reading a certain temperature, but when it get over here, it's not gonna be the same. So I like to just do this, folks. I'll put it this way. All my vents open. I wanna build up some heat. I'm looking at it right now, I'm at 200, and as I'm talking, look, I'm at 225 and it's rising. You know what I mean? So it's super simple, folks. We just wanna get some heat, clean that grill. I'm finna open up these chops, and we finna make it happen, folks. Okay, folks, listen. We're gonna take them out, right? I'm just gonna shake them like that. Get anything they wanna drip off, that's fine. We'll just go ahead and load them up right here. Right, I got that grill right. You guys can probably look over there. You can see that, that uh, that's mesquite wood. Listen, it's smoking, it's smelling real good. In a minute, somebody gonna come over here and ask me, AB, what you making today? You know what I mean? Uh, look at these right here. Look at the size of them though, folks. Look, nice quality meat, custom cut. Gotta have them. Now look at that right there. Now listen, we gonna let it sear probably for about two minutes, then I'm gonna flip it, give it two minutes like that. Then we're gonna move them over here to the indirect side, right? And then we're gonna finish them up. This is pork chop, that white meat, that other meat, right? Listen, we wanna go to 145 degrees. You don't want them to go to 165. This is a pork chop, folks. 165 and they're gonna be a little bit on the dry side. You know what I mean? Uh, check with the FDA. They say it's cool, AB say it's cool. Mm. Okay, so look, after I actually went about two minutes and 30 seconds, when we turn this over like that, look at that right there. That's what you wanna see. You know what I mean? Hey, I ain't gonna say nothing, but I think the grilled pork chop is something like overlooked when you guys think about being outside on that grill, right? Remember, two minutes on this side. After that, we're gonna take them off, we're gonna set them over there, and we're gonna use that meat thermometer. Check the center of that. We're looking for 145, folks. All right, I'm just gonna set these here and let these rest while these other two, these other three are doing their thing. So look, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this. Oh my goodness. Hey, look, when you do it right, I don't know if you guys can see that. Look, I'm not gonna put no pressure on it. I'm just gonna take the knife and I'm just gonna go like that. Look, man, when you grill them and they come out right that's what you come up with right let me just go ahead and get it make sure i don't drop it check it out folks cheers mm. hey folks i'm about to feast but look i just want to bring this to the forefront because if you ask me i say grilled chops or pretty much anything grilled as far as a uh, pork go on the grill that it gets like overlooked this right here, if you guys are eating pork, give it a chance and do it like I showed you. You sear two, two and a half minutes on each side. After that, move it to the indirect. Have your meat thermometer here. Check, as soon as you get to 140, take it off. It's gonna rise about 145 anyway. Let it rest for about 15 minutes. And then after that, eat it folks. Best serve hot. Hey, with that being said, you guys let me know down in the comment section below. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me just take the time to say, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell everybody out there, there's a channel out here to simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And you know what I'm about to do, folks? I'm about to feast. I'm out. Peace.